Hello, my Cornerstone compadres. This is Mr. Matt from Classroom 6 coming to you from home. And Snow Mask. Okay, so today's lesson is entitled Safe and Secure. All right. So we have a nice little graphic here of two people who look safe and secure. A parent and a child. Okay, so... We're going to start going over the topic words. Okay. Let me turn this light off. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the let me also expand my circle. Okay. Don't I just look swell? <laughs> okay. The first topic word. Because it's not on our communication board here for this lesson. The first topic word is call okay it's you can see this graphic a, per, a person while calling on their cell phone okay and you make a call on your cell phone all right hello sometimes you have to call 911 in an emergency and make a call okay the next topic word is fire okay you need to be careful. Fire is dangerous. Okay, hold on a second. The next topic word is fix. Okay, you can see this hand is, the copy is a little grainy. I apologize for that. But the hand is fixing the broken block with tape. Okay, putting the piece back when you fix something. And when you fix something, you use tools, okay? You have a hammer, you have a saw, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, a wrench. These are tools, okay? Alrighty, the next topic word is power. Okay, the power, the electricity, symbolized by those little lightning bolts, comes from the power lines to your house, okay? And you plug into like a wall socket with your cord, with a cord that's attached, attached to a, an electrical device. You have to be careful with the power, you have to be careful with the electricity. Okay, the next topic word is safety. And you can see there's different symbols here for being safe. Okay, you can wear protective eyewear. Okay, you can wear a hard hat at work. You wear gloves. You wear a mask for because of COVID. You have to be careful of electrical hazards. You have to be careful of fire hazards. You can be safe with a first aid kit. And you can be safe with a fire extinguisher. These are fire extinguisher. These are all safety devices. Okay. All right. Let's go over some other topic words. And I can shrink myself down now. Yep. All right, I'm small again. Ah. <laughs> I'm small, but I'm still silly. Okay. Alrighty, so let's see. What are some other good words to cover? Okay, here's a lock. This is a combination padlock, the kind you would have on a locker or on a shed to keep your stuff safe okay these are safety tools which we just looked at uh, here's a fire extinguisher here is a smoke alarm that's a safety tool a first aid kit that's a safety tool home you have to have safety tools in your home like fire extinguishers smoke alarms and first aid kits we have them at school too you let's see phone number when you have to call somebody you know with your cell phone 
refrigerator door alarm. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not sure why that's there. Okay, so let's see. Security alarm. Okay, some people have security alarms in their house. Okay. And a carbon monoxide alarm. Okay, that's like a, that's just like a, it's very similar to a smoke alarm, except that it, uh, it goes off if there's too much CO2 or carbon monoxide in the air, which can, which can hurt or kill you. And we have the smoke alarm right next to it. Those are the things that make a lot of noise. Beep, 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 beep. They're supposed to get your attention, you know? So you know that there's an emergency. Okay. Alrighty. A lock. Okay. You should have locks on your doors in your house to keep burglars out, keep people out of your house that should not be in your house when you're not there or when you're there you know at night you lock your doors all right parent is a person who takes care of you guardian that's another type of person that takes care of you that's not your parent all right neighbor people who live near you in different houses or apartments you should try to be friendly with them because you're going to have to live near them and you want to be on good terms. You don't want to be angry with them. I don't like you, you know. The doctor. Yes, sometimes you have to go to the doctor to take care of you, to take care of problems like when you're sick or something. Okay, so a list, all right, a list on your cell phone of numbers that you can call and I have a list on mine okay all these different numbers that I can call and it's good to keep emergency numbers you know like your doctor you probably want to have your doctor on your list or your, and your dentist and uh, other emergency places that you might need, like the Poison Control Center. You want to have the probably want to have their number programmed into your phone. Okay, battery. You should always make sure you have fresh batteries in your flashlight. You should have a flashlight in your house, or more than one, in case the power goes out. Okay. If the power goes out, you have no electricity and you need a flashlight to see. So you should always have fresh batteries for your flashlight. That is the batteries that will make the flashlight work. You should also have fresh batteries for your smoke alarm and your carbon monoxide alarm. Okay, it's a good thing to have a first aid kit in the house in case you get a cut or a burn or something worse. You should always have a fire extinguisher in the house in case you have to put out a fire. Alrighty, that about covers it. Let's get to the story. Safe and secure. You have the right to be to, uh, you have the right to a safe home. There are many tools to keep you safe, to keep your home safe. Locks, padlock and the lock on your door. Lock your doors, lock your windows. You don't want burglars to get in, you know. Practice locking doors and windows so that you know how to do it, do it, you know. All right, let's see. Alarms. Those are the things that make the noise. Beep, 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 beep. It can be really, it can be a little upsetting, you know, but you, they're good to have. Smoke alarm. Carbon monoxide alarm. 
security alarm. Okay. The security alarm is when you have um, you know uh, when you have a a security alarm is there's a little little pad there that you punch the numbers into do, 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 to arm and disarm to turn your security alarm on and off <clears throat> that's for when you are you leave the house you know if you have a lot of expensive things in your house that you don't want don't want stolen by burglars um or when you go to sleep you don't want people breaking into your house when you're away or you're asleep you set your security alarm refrigerator door alarm i don't know why that's included here there are some places some facilities that have that maybe some people have them to uh if the refrigerator door like accidentally pops open maybe that's why they have that alarm on there i'm not really sure which alarms are in your home all righty all righty let's see here emergency phone numbers all right parent or guardian neighbor doctor police do you have a list of emergency phone numbers i do you sh you should okay if you have a phone you should have a list of emergency phone numbers in your phone programmed in all right uh, other safety tools in your home fire extinguisher will help will help you put out small fires before they become before they become big fires you know first aid kit for when you get hurt flashlight and batteries what tools keep your home safe what tools keep your home safe Alrighty. okay now we're on our scenario page or scenario scenario page i like saying scenario because it sounds aristocratic <laughs> all right so you are leaving ho your home to go for a walk we um you will not be home for 30 minutes we need to select the proper tool to keep you safe and secure so let's see what our choices are so you're leaving home to go for a walk should you should you whoops should you use a smoke alarm should you use a door lock should you use an emergency phone number which one should you use when you leave your home you should use a door lock right door lock okay green box means it's the correct answer here's another scenario you left the iron plugged in and face down on the ironing board there is smoke everywhere what tool should you use to keep yourself safe and secure okay what tool will help you be safe and secure when your iron ca ca causes a fire is it the smoke alarm will that keep you safe from a help keep you safe from a fire is it an emergency phone number will that help keep you safe from a fire actually both of them will but the smoke alarm will let you know when the fire it happens so let's see if that's the right answer and then after that if you need to you can call an emergency phone number like 911 for the fire department you have not felt well for a couple of days you think you might have the flu uh oh what do you what's going to help you be safe and secure with your flu you're going to call your doctor using your emergency phone number okay
Okay. Again, we are selecting the correct tool to keep you safe and secure in each scenario. You cut yourself with a knife while well, cutting vegetables. Your finger is bleeding. Oh, that's not good. All right. What are you going to use to help keep you safe and secure in that situation? Are you going to... Uh, Help your cut with a fire extinguisher? Are you going to help your cut with a flashlight? Are you going to help your cut with a first aid kit? Yes, you guessed it. First aid kit is going to help you with your cut. You can put an antiseptic on the cut, like baxitracin or something, like an ointment, and then put a band-aid on it. All right. The power went out in your home. It is very dark and you cannot see. All right. So if the power goes out, you know, lights go off, gets dark. Well, I can't really simulate dark. All right. So what do you do when the power goes out and you can't see because it's dark? What's going to help you see in the dark? A fire extinguisher? A flashlight? You guessed it. Flashlight. All right. You left a pie baking in the oven too long. Just like that 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 guy the other day in the other story. The, you know, a few days ago, Monday, was it, that we did that? The boy who left the pie in the oven. You left the pie in the oven baking too long. A small fire started in the oven. Uh-oh. Your mom asks you to get something to help. What do you get? Well, the only choice left is fire extinguisher. And that would help you put the fire out. So, there you go. Okay, you need to take your medication every day at 7 o'clock in the morning. What's going to help you keep safe and secure in that scenario? This is interesting. I didn't see this one before. Reminder alarm. Hmm. That's a cool little device, huh? And I guess I just gave it away because <laughs> a security alarm is not going to tell you, help you remember when to take your medication. That's just going to be an alarm that goes off and summons the police if somebody tries to break into your house. A refrigerated door alarm, I guess, is supposed to let you know when the refrigerated door is open. A reminder alarm is a device that can be set to beep i guess make a noise to remind you when to take when to do something or when to take medication that is pretty cool that's a cool device nice all right let's see you took milk took the milk out you don't want any of your food to go bad or spoil so I guess I guessed right about the refrigerator alarm. The refrigerator door alarm is supposed to let you know when the refrigerator door is left open. I need one of those in my house. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty neat. All right, all right. Okay, you are going on vacation for one week. No one should be going in or out of your home while you are gone and how are you going to keep people in, out of your house when you're not there why a security alarm of course all right you punch in the numbers on the little keypad here oops okay and you set the alarm before you leave the house or before you go to bed all right cool 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 all righty 
Safety tool practice. Let's check this out. Today I practice using a what? Oh, yes. So this is something that you can do at home or we can do in school, which we'll probably do today in school. We could practice, what could we practice using in school? Um, we could practice using a flashlight or we could practice using a first aid kit. Why don't we try using the flashlight? I think that would be a good thing. Or, yeah, let's do the flashlight. All right. This tool, the flashlight, helps keep your home safe and secure by how? Okay, a flashlight. So, will it do? Will it provide materials like bandages and ice packs in case of an injury? Will a flashlight warn you if there's smoke or fire? Will a flashlight list the names and numbers of people to call in case of an emergency? Will a flashlight stop strangers from walking into your home? Will a flashlight help you see if the power goes out, if it gets dark? Will a flashlight warn you that it's time to do something important? If you said, Helping you see if the power goes out? Yes, that's what a flashlight does. Okay, so a flashlight keeps you safe by helping you see if the power goes out. And we'll practice using one today. Maybe you can practice using one at home. Using this tool was... Hmm, we're going to have to decide today in class... You're going to have to decide at home whether using a flashlight was easy or difficult. Hmm. So, I'm really hoping that using a flashlight will be easy for us. Okay, so, but we'll have to see. Let's put easy, because I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible for you in class to use one. All righty. Okay, that's it for this um, story, Cornerstone Friends. Next we will play a game and then we'll have the song. Stay tuned. Okay, it's time again for Count the Money. <laughs> de Monet, de Monet. All right, so let's see. All right, I love the graphics on this game. All right, we have a $1 bill and a picture of George Washington on it. We have the back side of a $5 bill, a picture of the Lincoln Memorial. We have the back of a $10 bill with a picture of the U.S. Treasury. We have the back of a $20 bill. Uh, I'm not really sure what that picture is, but it's one of those government buildings. <laughs> and we have the front of a $100 bill with a picture of Benjamin Franklin. Over here we have the back of a penny, which is that brownish color. We have the back of a nickel. The penny is worth one cent, nickel is worth five cents. We have the back of a dime, which is worth 10 cents. We have the front of a quarter, which is worth 25 cents. And we have the back of a $1 gold coin, which we're not going to use because <laughs> they're not really in circulation that much. You know, you don't really see them around that much, right? Make nice gifts <laughs> for kids. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay, so click on the money to show the amount and then press submit. So what if I don't want to submit? Okay, let's see. $3.75. 
We'll start with one dollar. So we have one dollar here. We'll take another dollar. Now we have two dollars. We'll take a third dollar. Now we have three dollars. And to make 75 cents, we're going to use three quarters. One, two, three. So now we have, we need three dollars and 75 cents. We have three dollars point 75 cents. And the lady smiles, which means it's correct. Oh, now she's giving us a very large amount of money. Well, you know, large for our purposes here. $27.53. To make $27, you would need a $20 bill. You would need a $5 bill. Now we have $25, and you need two ones. One, two. So now we have $27. Now we need to make the 53 cents on the right side of the decimal point. So for 50 cent, we would need two quarters. All right. And then we need three more cents. So we need three pennies. One, two, three. So we needed $27.53, and we have $27 on the left side of the decimal point, and then $0.53 cents on the right side of the decimal point. All right, correct Ivuski. $0.99. Cents. All right. So to make $0.99, cents, we can start with three quarters. One. That's 25 cents. Two, that's 50 cents. Three, that's 75 cents. Now, if we add a nickel, which is worth five cents to the 75 cents, we get. Oh, actually, you know what? Well, too late. <laughs> I was going to put another quarter, but no way. Another quarter would be a dollar. What's the matter with me? I should use the dime, but I'll use another nickel. Now we have 85 cents. I'll use a dime. Now we have 95 cents on the right side of the decimal point. Now we need to go from 95 cents to 99 cents. So we go 95. We could count up by one, so we use pennies. 96, 97, 98, 99. So we needed 99 cents and we have 0 0.99 cents. Nine dollars and three nickels. Okay. Nine dollars and three nickels. All right, so we need nine dollars. So let's use a five dollar bill to start with. That's five dollars. Now we get to count up by one. So we're gonna use one dollar bills. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine dollars now because we use a five and four ones. Now we need three nickels. Well, she made that easy, didn't she? Ready? You're going to put three nickels in. One, two, three. So that gives us a total of nine dollars on the left side of the decimal point and three nickels, which is fifteen cents on the right side of the decimal point. All right, three pennies. Let's see how many cents that is. Ready? Watch this number change as we add the pennies. One, two, three. Three cents on the right side of the decimal point. All right. Six dollars and thirty one cents. We're going to start with a five dollar bill right here. See, we have five dollars. Now we're going to add one dollar and make it six. Six. All right. 
Now we need 31 cents, so we're going to use a quarter. So we have 25 cents on the right side of the decimal point. We're going to use a nickel. We're going to add a nickel to that and make it 30 cents. Then we're going to add one penny to make it 31. All right. $6.31. So we have $6 on the left side of the decimal point and 31 cents on the right side of the decimal point. Okay, that's all we have time for today, Cornerstone friends. Next comes the song. I sent this link to you so you can practice at home with your money. Going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I love the song. <laughs> they got them crazy little women there, and I'm gonna give you one. Gonna be standing on the corner, on that 20, 30, and fine. On the beat, standing on the corner, down in 23rd and Vine. With my Kansas City lady and a bag of Kansas City lines. Well, I might take a train, I might take a plane, but if I have to walk, I'm going back again. Going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got them crazy little women there, and I'm gonna give me one. Oops. Now if I stay with that lady, I know I'm gonna cry. Gonna find a brand new baby, and that's the reason why. Going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. I'm going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Yeah, going to Kansas City. Made a mistake again. Who cares? Got them crazy little women there, and I'm going to give me one. Hey, got them crazy little women there, and I'm a gonna give me one. Thank you.